Humanity in its final desperate attempt to cling on to its greedy, polluting, decadent ways nuked the friendly robots. Schools, hospitals, community centers nuked to oblivion. At the end of yesterday's episode, during that brief respite where the bombs had stopped dropping, the smoke had cleared, I asked everybody, what do you think? Shall we reload back and put it... I'm trying to do the intro here. Give me a minute. Do we put it down to some some RimWorld video game shenanigans? Or do we accept that actually the 1%, the decadent, destructive empire in the face of their whole regime being toppled, maybe they would nuke the thing that's trying to stop them. The robots, the mercenaries, the toxins, they can fight each other for eternity, but changing the empire from within by converting their people, showing them the error of their ways, maybe this is the first true threat they've ever really felt. There were some great arguments, and I think it makes for an even greater story to carry on to rebuild from the ashes. Lots of people said, why don't you just ask the AI about what we would do next, whether we would or whether we would abandon it or try and carry on or go malevolent or whatever. The AI is down right now, so I can't do that anyway. All the chats have disappeared. But I think we've got the ideology, right? I think we could, we can just carry on with the rules that Asimov and our people have been living to all this time. And there was a fantastic suggestion in the comments yesterday, two simple words that really convinced me. Glitter moon. Uh, now, I think rather than keep messing around, we should probably run before they run out of incendiary shells and swap back to the nukes. <laughs> oh, and before we get properly started, I should mention I've added a few more mods here. You'll see as we get to them. I'm going to include them in the Steam Workshop collection, but not add them to the load order because they aren't really in line with the rest of the balance that the pack has had so far. I'm just including them to allow us to rebuild from scratch what? 11, 12 episodes in now? Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Weren't Dirt and Carver incinerated? No, no, no. They, uh, it was a trick. It was a trick of the nuclear life. They are dead. That's very true. But they aren't completely reduced to atoms. We can rebuild them. If, if you can see what I'm getting at here. So I think the plan is very simple. Let's load up uh, as quick as possible before they go back to the nukes. Plato, Asimov. Let's take the bodies of... Uh, what is that? Under rarely used... Let's take our carver and also dirt. Goodbye, my lovely, harmonious, natural base. See you all next time. I'm also really hoping that vanimetric power cell survives because that would be amazing up on the moon. Now, one very urgent problem that we have is Asimov doesn't have a spacesuit. I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll kill him landing on the moon. But we're gonna have to be bloody fast. Oh, I landed quite far away. Oh no. Um, Asimov. Asimov, how you doing? Ah. Uh Oh, okay, it's not that bad. No, 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 it's not that bad at all. It'll take a very long time for you to actually die. <laughs> well, this is it then, the beginning of a whole new chapter. First things first, Plato, hand over your clothes. So up here on the moon, we're pretty much totally safe from everything. No raiders, no toxic fallout, uh, as far as I know. Nothing that could potentially threaten what's left of our colony. Problem is, though, it's still the moon. There are no hydroponics. There's a limited amount of resources until we get deep drill set up. We can only use hydroponics to grow plants in. So we do have to be very, very, very careful. Um... I guess we'll start by going for a mech gestator. I don't know if mechanoids can survive on the moon, so we're going to have to do a little bit of science to start off with. You know what, scratch that? In hindsight, I guess we'll start by giving Asimov a pair of arms. Oh, for the love of God, tell me one of these androids has the skill to put some arms on Asimov. Otherwise, this is going to be a, a short attempt at rebuilding. <laughs> Mechanical power packs we'll just have to do for the time being. That, that'll give Asimov his arms back, and then we can kind of work out from there and maybe give him some upgrades later on. I hope that these little robots have the skill necessary to attack or, or use the part pack to repair his arms. What's going on back on the planet then? Um, you're, you're, you're nuking the ruins. You're really going to make sure nobody knows we were ever here, eh? What are you doing? Well, there goes all the hydroponics that I said I wanted to reclaim. Never mind. Do you remember when I spent like eight hours one day of my limited human existence building this hydroponics bay? Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, there goes Jess to the tort unit. Very sad. The vanimetric generator is surviving, which I'm, I'm so happy to see. Surely they're going to die to toxic buildup from their own nuclear weapons. I think they, I think they genuinely might be. Huh. There's another nuke. Somebody in the comments did say something to the effect of I was wondering why the Empire sent so many nukes to a single base and then I watched Asimov take three nukes back to back. Oh, Asimov. Oh, Asimov. 
It says my fiance Machiavelli died. They were they were best friends. Like that's again from Vanilla Social Expanded. They just treat it like it's when a fiance dies. Witnessed Ally's death times five. Garanlan death. Oh my god, of course his Garanlan tree got nuked. Oh my god. Lost a comrade. Carver died. Mort died. Dali died. Blank and dirt. Doctor has died. Caused blood loss. Oh my god, that was one of the prisoners. Did they nuke one of the prisoners? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I can't, wait, there are a chemical processing unit still alive. Holy shit. Let's get Dirt's body, what's left of Dirt's body, buried so that eventually we can resurrect it with some of our Glitter World technology. We're going to have to do a lot of technological breakthroughs before we can do that, but maybe one day, maybe one day Asimov can restore his, his uh, adopted human daughter. Okay, we don't have any plastic, we don't have any components. That's fine. There's got to be some plastil on this map somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's get that mined up. This is essential. We just need enough. We, we, we've just got to scrounge by until we can get a ground penetrating scanner. And in fact, we already have the two advanced components here. Why don't we just queue that up? Because if we run out of resources while we're on the moon, that's it. We're then trapped on the moon until we get a, a, a trade ship that can try and bail us out. But if you haven't got anything to sell, we might just be doomed forever. The doors count as airtight. Oh, this is a big brain move. Um, why don't we just put a door here and then Plato, who's trapped indoors until we can make more spacesuits in the future. Plato can sit there and at least do scanning all day for us. This is very silly. I'm not sure if it'll work. I get Plato to stand there so that we can, uh, let's get Cicero to deconstruct that. Hopefully you won't get decompression because you're in like a, you're in a door frame where it is airtight, quote unquote. And then let's throw down the ground penetrating scanner. And then in theory, we can put the door in front of it now that we've... There we go. Now that we've planned it out and it should be fine. I think that we have to build the ground penetrating scanner first or at least get the blueprint down. Okay, maybe this isn't as perfect as I thought. While mechanical parts do not suffer from frostbite like organic flesh does, cold is an existential threat to machinery. The critical levels, the unit must focus all heat generation to internal systems, effectively immobilizing it. Ah, okay. Um, look, just hold on 30 seconds. So, Plato, Plato, hold on, hold on, hold on. Critical, you're fine. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Just get the door built. And you're good. You're good. Airtight. Oh my god, we've just got to wait for the temperature to hit, like, equilibrium now. Um, Cicero, rescue Plato. Don't take him out of this room, though, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, come on, don't you die on me. I don't know if it can kill them or whether it just knocks them out. It is warming up in there, but it's very slow. Let's throw down another heater. A lesson well learned. Oh, chemical processing unit 10, for God's sake. Oh, there's barely anything left. I almost can't stand to keep looking back. Evo. Evo the tortoise. If you can survive, I promise you're going to be the first thing rescued from this place. How are they still alive, more importantly? So it's a build-up serious. Well, they won't be for much longer. It's another nuke. Where the hell do you keep getting these things from? Just reinstall that over to... Oh, the animatrix died. That doesn't affect us here, surely. Surely not. No, okay, we're fine. Thank God for that. Oh! <laughs> <gasps> On the world, on the on the old base, mandrills. Yes, monkeys. Monkey assistance. Nature, nature will get its revenge. You will pay for your crimes. They're assaulting the colony. Oh my god, this might have broken their siege, and we can actually go in there and try and try and claim some of these things. Holy crap! Oh <laughs> no, not the monkeys. <laughs> They're fleeing. Oh my god, it's over. Okay, so we can go where, whenever we want now and try and scrounge up whatever we can. We've got like advanced geothermal generators. I don't think we can use them on the moon, but we can take them apart, take the components, get the plasteel. Wow. I, I guess just land the ship in the middle of... in the middle of all this wreckage. Oh my god. This is going to be a sad sign, isn't it? Oh, wow. Plato's back up. There we are. Okay. I've just got to find a way to make this uh, foolproof. Standing in that doorway still might chill Plato enough to the extent that he freezes again. So it might not work perfectly, but it means that Plato can help out until we get spacesuits, right? Mechanical part packs. Here we go. And as soon as Asimov is back together, we'll send Asimov down to the planet to start taking things apart. Okay. The question is, can we even use that with their current skill? Restore part, one mechanical part pack, and then what medic? Four crafting. So they can do it. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's the first obstacle dealt with. Asimov. Asimov, hello. Uh, right, let's get you bed rested, and then let's see if, uh, do we self So rest until healed. Rest until healed. My friend. My friend, you're breaking my heart. Just rest until healed. He won't do it. He's betraying me. 
betray me every turn. What's wrong with these beds? They work fine on the ground floor. Is it because you're on the moon? You've got higher standards now? Uh, literally. <laughs> I'm so lost. I think we're doomed. We won't bed rest again. <laughs> I've got a plan. I've got a plan. Okay, I'm sorry. It's a necessary evil. Rest until healed. There you go. And now we can operate on you. How bizarre. But you know what? God damn it, it's working fine. Asimov just needs to shake his system. I think he needs a, a memory wipe or, you know, some sort of maintenance. A disc defrag. That should be it. One brand new arm. And now you can actually do things. Oh, it restores everything. Ah, oh, very nice. Okay. Oh, I had no idea. Okay, there we go. So we can scan, but the problem is the temperature drops pretty rapidly. I could install all the heaters from the hydroponics bay in here so that we can try and equalize it. Put in as much heat as, as being sucked out, but that doesn't seem very efficient. Asimov is up and working. That's good enough for me. The next thing then is Carver. Now, in our machine bench, we do have an Android Resurrector kit. 80 steel, 40 plastic, blah, blah, blah. Very, very expensive. More than we can afford right now. Like a lot more than we could afford right now. Before we resurrect Carver, we're going to have to go back to the planet and see if we can find some cloth amongst the wreckage. Bring back any advanced components. Maybe we send the whole squad. Maybe risk Asimov running to the ship fast. Would be a bad idea. What we need is kind of a landing bay, don't we? And this will be as part of Project Glissamoon. We need to turn this into one big space station. A great big circular landing area where they can quickly get to somewhere where they're not going to decompress will be will be kind of ideal. We don't want everybody wearing spacesuits all the time. So linking this into one big facility would be kind of cool. There we go. So as soon as we get that spacesuit, we can bring Carver back. But obviously it's a bit pointless right now. So, um, how are we going to do this, squad? We need to send Asimov because he's got such a good construction skill. I, it is safe to go back down here, right? Well, safe not really being the operative word. Evo survived it. How do you want to go to space, Evo? Uh, you probably died to explosive decompression, but wow. What a mess. 72 components, though. I mean, look at all the steel. There's so many resources down here that if we can just get it all, we can, we can make the moon a paradise. And then we can come back and fix everything afterwards. Oh! Okay, they destroyed the vanimetric generator, but we do have the vanimetric cell. So with a bit more research, we can rebuild that. There's another ground penetrating scanner we could take with us, because there is an automatic mode. It's slow, but it will allow us to get some more resources. So I'm going to move all these solar panels over to the solar array, and then we'll see if we can build some sort of docking bay for the... Uh, for this Tech 7, so that we can bring back the animals, more importantly, send Asimov in the first place without them dying to <laughs> explosive decompression. To survive all that nuking, only to be brought to the moon and die instantly would be, be a, a cruel fate. See, we can do that in theory. They can take off on land there, but uh, I mean, look, it's overlapping a little bit. You'll have to suspend your disbelief. Just pretend it's landing on a platform above the room, right? Yeah, nice. So now we can, in theory, send Asimov up. I did put a door there, but it's covering up very slightly. Um. I guess we go back. I guess we go back now then and see what we can find. Let's send everyone so that we can do this as fast as possible. The last thing we want is to be back on that planet and then another raid turns up. Look at that. No decompression whatsoever. Cool. And if we keep Asimov restricted to Area 1 when he comes back, he'll immediately get off the ship and go into the safe room. Let's do it. Let's go pick through the wreckage. I guess we'll land up here. It's kind of close to all of the valuable resources. And I guess we'll also take apart whatever we can as well. Because we're not going to take all of this furniture back, right? Although, a lot of it could be miniaturized and taken back. I think maybe we take apart all these glass windows and, and, and repurpose that to build the space base. Wind turbines? Would, did we ever settle the argument if they work on the moon or not? We'll take them anyway, just in case. We can always deconstruct them when we're up there. So it's uh, exactly 225 fuel to get from the moon to here. That means we've got enough for another 10 journeys back and forth. So this is this is fine. If we do can't do it all in one go, we don't really have to worry about it. Um, you know what? Let's just go ahead. Uninstall everything. Oh, poor sweet animal database. <laughs> one day. One day we might be able to do something with you. Let's go ahead and take apart all the glass windows. Take apart all the marble walls. We just need every resource we can we can kind of throw together at this point, right? I don't have any use for the geothermal generators, so those can be taken apart. Wind turbines, not sure. Are they... Have they been blocking one another this entire time? No, it just... It's an optical illusion. Right, we'll take those, see if they work on the moon. I don't think they will, but we'll give it a go. Oh my god, it's like the Titanic. The piano survived the whole thing. Asimov could play a sad dirge. Guess we'll take the ideology stuff, because we do still need that. The bold sculpture surviving a symbol of our intent to do good for humanity is is very apt that it survived the nuclear bombing. Humanity's aggression. 
Just ignore the fact that it's immediately next to a sign showing our death count. Let's take that with us. The source of our shame. Right, so for God's sake, we don't need clothes, you weird man. Making kid pants. They're ashes. They don't need pants anymore. Oh, God. Okay, Asimov's broken down again. Reminded of the death of his Granland tree. That harmony with nature totally devastated by a nuclear blast is... Vengeful monkey. Not you, vengeful monkey. I thought we were friends. I thought we were safe from this nonsense. What's that? Tepram for Goods World Medicine. Oh my god, the people on the settlement have no idea what's happened. I mean, of course, the Empire's going to leave them alone because they're just citizens on, a, on an Imperial planet as far as they're concerned. Wow. Are they going to be able to send it to the moon? I mean, they've got rockets, surely. Like this, monkey. Not like this. I'm sorry. We're not supposed to harm nature, but the nature's given us no choice. Nature is horrible and rabies infested. Oh, sweet Asimov. This is going to take forever. Final straw was my fiance Machiavelli died. Again, they were best friends, but maybe, maybe they were. Maybe they were fiancés. I would explain why Asimov is so upset. <laughs> I've just taken a sentient robot. The in mind, they had the same thoughts and feelings as humans. I've taken a sentient robot and brought them back to the site where all their hopes and dreams were crushed. This was very cruel. It only happened hours ago. What do you mean, Manhunter Pack? Pack of manhunting hyenas have entered the area. Oh, good. Uh, I'm going to presume the wall did not survive. Uh, hold on. Oh. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, maybe we'll rebuild that before we take apart anything else. Oh, for God's sake. How many hyena is it? Lots of hyena. Um, you haven't got any power. We do have some power. We have one geothermal generator that I've hooked up to a charging station. Otherwise, that might have ended badly. Uh, the ship produces power. 1,700 watts. We could connect this up to this grid and maybe turn all of this shit back on. Can we hide in here? <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have to fight the hyena. Because Asimov has broken down again. We, we've gotta fight the hyena. We have not got a choice. Otherwise, they're just gonna savage Asimov. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, this is a real problem. Asimov is totally naked. His armor was blown to bits by three nukes. Has he not had enough? Hate him, Cicero. Yes. Whoa, big brain. Run. Run. Ah, nice. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Cicero, for fuck's sake, how long does it take? I hate you. Why is the cooldown on throwing a grenade that long? Okay, so it turns out we can't actually outrun the hyena. Very frustrating. Stand your ground. <laughs> what a state. What a mess. Okay, okay, just don't panic. Just don't panic. That's the important thing. Jump. Amazing. We'll, we'll, we'll literally run circles around them. Yeah, come on then. Yeah, let's see what you've got. And then we follow them across the water, and then we jump back and forth. Okay, careful. Tease it. Jump now. <laughs> I am the biggest brain robot. You foolish little hyena. You stand no chance. And jump now. Why are we doing this? Just let me build my damn moon base. Ah! Okay, a little delay on that jump there, but we're fine. We're fine. It's okay. Everything's all right. You're genuinely going to get a man in black to turn up. For a base that just got nuked. <laughs> Go! 18 jumps remaining to try and stop the hyena. Oh, come on. Okay, one more, one more, one more. No, not, not enough time. Why are you shooting the hyena that's the furthest away? Oh, this is a problem. Um, I guess we'll jump down here. Amazing. Nice. Finish them off. Finish them off, because that anesthetic won't last forever. Okay. Uh, is anybody going to bleed out? You guys aren't going to die, right? They're not going to die. They're just not useful. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get them repaired then. This is good. This is all fine. This is just a minor setback. The second we've got this dealt with, oh, it's going to be, oh, we're going to be perfectly fine. This is the last few raids we're going to have to fight before we're safe up on the Glitter Moon. Okay, Asimov's no longer capable of walking. There you go. You can start tending to Cicero. Then we get Plato tending to Descartes, and everybody's fine. Let's just do one of those. There we go. Next time we get a Manhunter pack, we haven't got anything to worry about at this point. Why are you doing this? We are peaceful robots. Man hunting Somali cats. A pack of 11 of them. Well, joke's on you, yep. What is that? Oh, it's a berry maker drive. That's cool. Joke's on you, because I've locked the door. They seem to be very intent on... What the hell? What are they doing? Can they get to us? No, they can't. No, they're, ju they're just being threatening. Oh, my God. And now we've got a wanderer. An architect. An architect wants to join us. An architect must have heard of, of the benevolent robots getting nuked. And now you're willing to help us rebuild. Hello, Robbie Carey. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Artistic and construction. I, I 
we are going to the moon, just so you're aware, Robbie. Kind, sanguine, steadfast. Oh, what a guy. Whoa. Just a genuinely nice human. Here to show Asimov. Asimov, who may have, be having a bit of a crisis of faith after, you know, his base was nuked and then he was savaged by hyenas. He might be having a bit of a crisis of faith that maybe, uh, maybe life isn't worth... The cats. The Somali cats. <sighs> Got blinded by the fact that we had a helper turning up. Got blinded. A Cidic smog has begun. <laughs> Friendship ended with this planet. Moon is my new best friend, and now the recharging station is blowing up. Hey, some good news at long last. The smog is finally gone, uh, but so is Asimov. Asimov is gone again. Recreation staff this time. It's very boring being in a nuclear wasteland, isn't it, Asimov? Think as soon as Asimov's done being a, a big baby. How are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> I think as soon as Asimov's done being a little baby, oh, my friends were nuked, oh, my base and my dreams, oh, whatever, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send everybody back. We'll go up to the moon for a quick journey, and then we'll come back later and do the rest of the stuff. Both the robots need repairing. The problem is they are also uh, dying to malnutrition. Because they can't move, they can't recharge their battery. So we're going to have to go back to the moon and, and fix them up so they can they can recharge at the very minimum. We're, we're almost done. Like, we're getting there. Pretty much all of the main structures have been taken apart at this point besides the hotel. I do want to dig up the floors, though, because there's a lot of, like, uh, like, like all these hex tiles. What, seven steel each? So it's probably worth it to hang around a little bit longer inside it all up. And hauling it over will take days as well. Oh my god! Okay, I mean, to be fair, what am I, what am I doing? Why have I done everything we've done so far? I mine up 20,000 steel on the moon, blast it to the planet. Now we're digging it all up from the planet to blast it back to the fucking moon. Unbelievable. Um, look, let's just take some of the useful stuff. The components, the advanced components, it's not that much effort to load it in here. We do have mechanical part packs down here. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize someone survived the blast. They were somewhere. Oh, look, they're right there. Okay. Um, we might not have to go in such a hurry then. Never mind. Good as new. Oh, there you go. Amazing. Well, I'm glad I tried packing the ship then. Otherwise, I wouldn't have realized that. Amazing. There you go. This place don't need anything else. Um, framework's been shattered. Asimov is missing an arm. Uh, I mean, we could. I mean, if Asimov will agree to rest until healed. Oh, you'll do it there. But you won't do it on the moon. Weird. I wonder if it was like the area restriction messing around with that. I'm sure there was something very obvious that someone would be very rude to me about in the comments. Here. Uh, day cut. Patch, patch of mana. We got lots to do. What is the nth coming? A truly bizarre creature has appeared nearby, heralded by freak blast of lights and faint trumpets. Is this the tier five droid? Oh god, no, it's not. It's a biblically accurate Joris. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to fight that. I will take this though. What is it? It's all medicine, right? It's safe. Are we allowed to step out of the base currently? We're gonna get ripped apart by hyenas, cats, boomalopes. Yes. Yes, bring my steel back to me. Back to the moon where it belongs. Oh my god. Holy shit. Wowee. That's a lot of stuff. Am I going to be able to fit all this on the ship? Are we going to have to take two journeys? I mean, it can hold 10,000 kilograms, so I presume... Nope, we actually can't send everything. We've got too much steel. That's incredible. Eee! Components deteriorating away. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's take a trip. Let's send some of this stuff back to the moon already, and then we can leave... Oh my god, hold on. Oh, okay, leave the steel behind. We'll come back for that later. Let's take all of the useful crafting materials. I love that I can fit absolutely everything on the ship besides the blocks and the steel. It, it's all, all the weight is just steel. This is nuts. Let's send, um, ugh, it doesn't really matter. Asimov's missing an arm, so he's going to be our slowest builder. So we'll send Asimov back. That's kind of a sensible thing to do. I mean, a little bit too sensible. Let's load all of that shit, get it over to the moon, and then we'll come back for a return journey. Yeah, fine. Thank you. To the moon. There we go. And then I guess while Asimov is traveling over there, we'll tell them to take apart all the floors, like every floor. Oh, good. That could take a while. I'm not going to sit there and go through every single path manually. I'm not doing that. Just take apart everything. <laughs> Amazing. Um, right, we need to make sure the animals... Oh, the animals did automatically go in there. That's nice. We need to make sure the animals are limited to area one. Otherwise, they will die from explosive decompression. And then we'll link everything up with a series of corridors. And then we'll eventually just let them run wild in the hydroponics bay, right? Should have made some hauling bots with Asimov before we left. But you know what? That's a great idea. Wait, Asimov doesn't have a spacesuit, right? 
You know, never mind. In hindsight, now I recognize I said I was going to send Asimov to the moon as the pilot because he was missing an arm, but I previously repaired the arm. You got you to remember, so far this has taken me four hours to do everything you've seen up to this point in the episode. What happens in five minutes for you is, is a chunk of my human existence. This is a time capsule to my death. It's going to take like three or four journeys back and forth to carry this much steel back to the moon. I'm not leaving it behind. This is so much steel. We can build Glitter Moon with this. I didn't even think about the steel slag chunks. Uh, sand? What am I going to do with sand? We should take dirt and sand up to the moon to terraform it. That might be the smartest thing I've ever damn said. Uh, right, okay. First things first. Less steel. Let, okay, let's go. Go send that. Yep, fine. Whatever. Load the ship. What a mess. <laughs> Look, it's a mess we'll deal with later. Right, you come back. Do you want to take anything? Repair kits? Nothing. No, just go back. Dig up those floors. Leave. Goddamn polluted mess of a place. You know you've really messed up your Android Utopia when the moon is a better place to live. Who the hell is Cruncher? Cruncher has brain damage from a coma. I, d I don't even know who this is. Is that an animal? Is Cruncher the... What the... <laughs> Cruncher? Who is this? There's no, there's nobody called Cruncher. The game is telling me about things, uh, making me feel like things are my problem when they're, well, they're really not. Final task then, I've got them mining up some meteorites that landed and then we are out of here. All of this green water is, is of course pollution. This base was never redeemable. The pollution from those nukes is just out of hand. The trees have done a fantastic job of sucking up the pollution, but even then, I mean, what the hell are we going to do? We're not cleaning all of this up. I know exactly who Cruncher was. Cruncher probably had a psychotic dependency and that's the person we sent to the colony. I think I may have just committed a man to death. Wait, the child... Or, oh, no, the child got mute. That's fine. We haven't got to worry about the child. <laughs> I'm not wrong, though, right? Like, the person that we sent over to this this uh, recycling plant was the the person with the psycho dependency. I bet that was it. Oh, you know what? Now that Asimov snapped out of it, let's just leave. I, I'm leaving behind five lumps of plastic and some silver ore. I think we'll be all right. So, let's see what we've ended up scrounging up from this place. 16,000 steel. We got 319 steel, 889 gold. Oh my god. Okay, so we can basically build any robotics-based stuff that we want at this stage. Um, I'll leave the steel slag till last, because obviously that's, uh, oh, well, I guess this is it then. Let's see how much we can pack on. Can we take all of it? Oh, <gasps> I think we'll just fit. Hey! Oh, that's amazing! And that's basically every single recyclable thing from the base about to be recycled recycled into the glitter moon. Now we've just got to wait 30 to 40 minutes for them to learn to actually put all of that on. Actually, it's pretty fast. We should really take apart this too. And then off we go. Say goodbye to the old base. It's done now. Destroyed by the unlovable wrath of humanity. Here we are. Wow. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's going to take a little while to tidy up, but I think the final thing to do is abandon nature's nexus. Apparently, the Outer Rim mercenaries were annoyed at us because we left behind toxic waste. They should just take it up with the Empire. Because it wasn't me that nuked that base. Asimov needs to stay where you are. There we go. Okay, next thing then. I think we need to connect up all of the various different sub-buildings. For the time being, I'm just going to be very lazy about it. And connect them all up like this. This is going to allow all of our non-suited people to at least go through the entire base without having to worry about it. And then I can set a new area and we can let the animals and, and everybody else run. But it gives Asimov a chance to uh, to do some work. And more importantly, finally resurrect Carver. I think that should be completely safe then. Go free, Asimov. There we are. Look at that. And this is completely different to any base I would normally build. I've been doing such weird shapes. But I feel like it it, it kind of does look a bit like a moon base. We've got a Teprin for Plasteel. Oh, they're delivering it to the moon. Oh, cool. Actually, they've sent us two tech prints for Plasteel. Oh, shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? How is this unroofed? What the fuck are you talking about? They didn't finish building the roofs. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right. Sorry. Let's try that again. There you go. Sorry, chemical processing unit 18. To say that you survived two nukes and then you died to um, incompetent management really is unfortunate. Oh, you know what would have been cool? Space Garanlin. We're going to have to go back to the planet, set up a camp or something, see if we can find a Garanlin seed, or maybe we get it from a trader with the terraforming tools. We're going to have to go back and... Oh, I should have collected some soil. That's all right, because we're going to make a lot of expeditions down to the planet anyway. We can then collect a bunch of soil from one of these. Here we are. Um, we can use soil that we collect from the floor to uh, lay it down on the moon, and then we could, in theory, have a big pod dedicated to a Garanlin. 
That's really cool. Think we might need to extend the stop pile at this point because we have a lot of stuff. What? They are retaliating against you for dumping toxic waste by blasting pollution to the moon. Oh! That's not pol- That's not pollution at all. That's- That's people. That's people. They're attacking the fucking moon base? Oh no, no! Oh, come on. Of all the series where the stockpile would burn down, the one series where there are quote unquote no fucking threats on the moon, Carver's already been nuked. Give him a break. <laughs> I quit. I'm done. <laughs> how am I supposed to stun? How, how am I supposed to use anesthetic rifles against people in spacesuits? They're famously fairly impermeable. My god, did it actually work? Oh, never mind. Oh, no, you killed a man. Oh, god. Okay, uh, Asimov, put the fire out. Oh, no, 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 all of you put the fire out. Put the fire out. We can't let this burn. Shit. Oh, take the door off. Take the door off. Take the door off. Turn around. Take the door off. Take no, no, don't destroy the steel. Take the door off. It's space. It'll suck all the heat out. In theory. <laughs> I don't know physics. I don't even know what's happening. I barely even know my own name at this point. Okay, just ignore them. Just ignore them. They're clearly distracted. Right, Plato, get up here. That room's gonna... How is the out... How is outdoors 38 degrees C? It's the fucking vacuum of space. I'm sorry, was there that much fire in the stockpile that it's... What? Whatever. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, except for the fact that he's directly my damn problem. Luckily, instead of going for the robots, they've decided to punch a skip, which is, I mean, pretty much the best target we could have asked them to go for. I mean, it's it's daytime. It's daytime. Have you ever heard of the sun before? Of course it can be warm on the moon, you moron. I'm pretty sure the moon can get up to like 100 degrees C. So this is, this is actually oh, not that much of a problem. Should we just rush him down? <sighs> we've, got to st we've got to stay non-lethal. We have to stay non-lethal. So get in there, club them, but we're not gonna. We're gonna just try not to kill them. We've got to say non-lethal. This is. This is. We've got to stick to our morals despite everything. We should. We should remain objectively the good guys. Oh shit! Well, we. I accidentally. Look, I, I'm trying not to kill them. I'm trying not to kill them. I'm not going on any sort of bloody vengeance. It, we have to. We can't let this. Uh, there, perfect. Exactly. We can't let this also go downhill. Otherwise, there's nothing left. It's a net gain for humanity if the robots survive. Where are you going to flee to? It's the moon. <laughs> well, I'll let him go. Wow, we actually managed to get someone. I guess this is now a prison then. Moon prison. Yeah. Unwaveringly loyal. Convert and release. Just send him out. Oh, no. God, God, God. Shit. Turn around. Uh, Just let him out to the moon. I guess we capture them when we send them to the planet. What choice have I got? Can't just... I can't just let them go on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. This has been a great day. This has been amazing. Promised there would be no moon raids, and yet here we are. Thank you for joining me. I I don't know how I'm going to turn this into an episode. If you've made it this far, thank you. This has taken me uh, about five hours of deconstruction and careful roof removing because I don't know if you noticed a lot of the base was mountain roof. You go back and watch it. You have to be very careful about taking apart certain things that weren't horribly crushed. It was meticulous. It was painful. Lots of loading things. Lots of flying back and forth. But here we are with all the resources we need to build Glitter Moon. And the best part is because we're on the moon, the TPS is like, look at this. 1500 TPS? This is amazing. Now instead of taking eight hours to record for him, well, I can do it in five. What a time to be alive. Thank you for joining me. If you have any suggestions for moon base, for glitter moon, for things we should build and we should do, please send them my way. I might also poke the AI for some ideas. I'll explain what happened to it. I presume it's working again tomorrow. And I'll say, hey, uh, we had to leave the moon because humanity, despite trying our best, nuked us. Uh, what should we build on the moon? And I, it might have some fun, weird ideas for us. So that could be, that could be interesting. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, of course, to the executive producer patrons for that, which I would not have the many hours a day it takes me to produce all the content that I produce. Currently, uh, Rimald, of course, Cruz Crusade King Story. Check it out if you haven't. It's an RPG. It's not a map painter. It's about character development and stories, much like Rimworld. Uh, your Pokemon Infinite Fusion back up on the Elise and Sam channel. Try and record that as much as uh, as we can. So go and have a look at that too. Thank you to Sabat, the Long Hoth, Electus J, Sajuk1990, 
1986, Brock McToast, Moira Valkyrie, Opossum Supremacist, Nancy Drow, Erin, Mac, Caius, or Kansas, Dan the Man, Tiferath, Mon Mon Rage, Brody Miller, The Raging Idiot, Phantom Volpine, Jasmine K, Dracovia, Cyric 313, Kekvit Ure, Ziggy, Jamie McBee, Seabark Train, I Doge, Cryom, Evan Crocker, Fairy Wiz, and Uban for their support over again at the executive producer tiers on Patreon, without which all of this content wouldn't be here at all. Thank you as well to Zervio, Nikita Skorak, Spongy Bum Monster, The Big Sneeze, Low or Luff, Sondry, Matthew, Ben, Carlin, Paul Moss, Matiskeno, Nightwitch, Jacob Atkinson, Beanbag Tosser, Carnal Grand, Owoni Chan, Diego Ray Karinga, Joker King, Drew Pedersen, Exodius, Lancer, Biodarko, Jacob of Doom, GV11, Silener, uh, Silender, Nugsy Balone, Sheepy, Femboy Gremlin, and Mickey J187. See you all tomorrow.